gave the magnitude and direction of net force centering on a drop of rain falling down with a constant speed. It is given constant speed. Okay, constant speed means uh, acceleration is zero. So acceleration is zero. Okay. Net force is also equal to zero. Acceleration is zero. Force is a cork floating over a water surface. The cork is floating. Why is cork is floating? Because the gravitational force acting on it downward becomes equal to the upward buoyant force. As these two forces are balanced, the net force acting on the object is again same. Next, a kite skillfully held stationary in the sky. Again, it is stationary. Stationary means the forces are balanced. So net force is equal to zero. A car moving with a constant velocity. Velocity is constant, so acceleration is zero. Acceleration is zero, so force is equal to zero. Then a high speed electron in space, far from all material objects, free from electric field and magnetic field. Far from all material objects means no gravitational force, no electrostatic force, no magnetic force, so net force is equal to zero. Now, come to question two. A pebble of mass 0 0.5 kilogram is thrown vertically upwards. Give the direction and magnitude of net force acting on the pebble during its upward motion. When it goes upward, you know, its weight is acting mg downward. Then, during downward motion, downward motion also. Weight mg is acting down. Then, at the highest point, when it is momentarily at rest, that time also gravitational force is acting on the object. So, answer is mg down. Gravitational force mg down. Then, do your answer change? The pebble was thrown at an angle 45 degree with a horizontal direction. So, when it has been thrown horizontally, that time also its weight is acting vertically downward. So, there is no change in the answer. Now, come to question 3. Give the magnitude and direction of the net force acting on a stone of mass. 0.1 kilogram. Okay. Just after it is dropped from the window of a stationary tree, it is dropped. So gravitational force is acting on it. So force on it mg downward. Then just after it is dropped from the window of a train running at a constant speed. Our uh, velocity of 36 kilometer per hour. So that time also when it is falling, you know, its weight is acting downward. So answer is mg downward. Now just after it is dropped from the window of a train accelerating with the one meter per second square. You see, once the uh, the stone is detached from the train. Once it is detached from the train, away from the train, there is no significance of acceleration of the train. Therefore, we can say again the answer will be mg downwards. Now, the stone lying on the floor of a train, which is accelerating with the one meter per second square, and the stone being at rest relative to train. So in this situation, what happens? Here, the train platform we can take. Okay. There, the stone is lying. So its weight Fg acting downward, and normal reaction is acting upward. They mutually cancel each other. 
therefore in vertical direction we can say the net force is equal to zero vertical force fv equal to zero but at the same time the train has an acceleration in horizontal direction so along with the train it experiences a horizontal acceleration because of the horizontal acceleration there is a force in horizontal direction that force will be ma where a is equal to 1 meter per second square so these are the answers to question 3 now next come to question 4 one end of a string of length l connected to a particle of mass m okay and a small track is connected and it is moving on a smooth horizontal table is moving on a horizontal table okay the horizontal table means you can see at every point uh, the gravitational force is acting downwards so no influence of gravitational force acting. so when it is moving over the horizontal table then uh, take it like this the table and it's moving in a circular path So as it moves in the circular path, then the whole table surface. Now the pebble tied to the stone, okay, sorry, tied to the thread. So now there is a tension in the thread. Now this tension will give no other force, no need to consider gravitational force because it is horizontal surface every point gravitational force will be same so in such a situation we can see uh, the tension will give the necessary centripetal force so option one is the answer the tension gives the necessary centripetal force now come to question five a constant retarding force of 50 newton is acting on a body of mass 20 kilogram with the initial speed 15 meter per second how long does it take to stop so again you calculate first you can find acceleration a is equal to f by m once you get the acceleration use the formula v is equal to u plus a t You want to stop it so v is equal to c substitute the values and find the value of you will get the answer now question six a constant force on a body of mass three kilogram mass is given and it is speed is two meter per second speed changes from 2 meter per second to 3.5 meter per second in 25 seconds okay the direction of motion of the body remains unchanged what is the force and direction of force so here uh, I find again you can see can find first acceleration a is equal to v minus u by t. a is equal to v minus u by t then find force f is equal to m a force f is equal to m a and what is the direction of force you can see its velocity increases velocity increases means the force is applied in the direction of motion okay Force is applied in the direction of motion. Now, come to question seven. A body of mass five kilogram is acted upon two perpendicular directions, eight newton and six newton. Then, 
give the magnitude and direction of that acceleration. The direction is not specified in this question. Therefore, we just take fx is equal to 8 Newton and fy is equal to 6 Newton. Therefore, f is equal to under root fx square plus fy square because you know force is a vector quantity you got to use this formula and uh, you can find the direction and theta and theta you know is equal to y component divided by x component after calculating f y by f x, find the value of theta using tangent table. Then uh, that will be the angle made by resultant force F with the 8 Newton force. Okay, I repeat the angle made by resultant force with respect to horizontal force 8 Newton. Now Question H. A driver of a three wheeler moving into 36 km per hour. Kilometer per hour, you have to convert in the meter per second. Then the child is standing in the middle of the road, and the vehicle has to be addressed in four seconds. Okay. What is the average retarding force? So again, you can use the formula V is equal to Q plus 80. Q is 36 km per hour. You have to convert it to meter per second. V is 0. So you can find the value of A. Acceleration you can find out. Once you get the value of acceleration, use the formula F is equal to MA. Then you will get the retarding force. One thing you have to note when you Take the value of M, you have to take it 465 kilogram. Also, the vehicle plus drive. Okay, now next question 9. We have discussed already a rocket with a lift of mass 20,000 kilogram is blasted upwards with an initial acceleration 5 meter per second square. Calculate the initial thrust. Thrust means force only. F is equal to m into as it is going upward, you have to take g plus a. This formula reason that and all we have discussed it. So use the formula f is equal to m into g plus a. Now, next question 10. Question 10, you have to solve very, very powerfully. You have to solve question 10. Okay. You see, question 10, you can see a body of mass 4 kilogram. Mass is given. Moving initially with a speed of 10 meter per second. Initial speed U, 10 meter per second. So, mass M. Initial speed U is given 10 meter per second. Okay. Moving towards north. Moving towards north. Okay, and it is subjected to a force 8 Newton towards south. Towards south, uh, 8 Newton force is applied for 30 seconds. Okay, that the force is acting only for 30 seconds. Then, take the instant the force is applied to be T equal to 0. So that means uh, before t is equal to 0, you know what is going on. It was moving towards north with a speed of 10 meter per second. Predict its position that t is equal to minus 5 second, 25 second, 100 second. Okay. Now t is equal to minus 5 means uh, don't think that time is negative. Okay. It means uh, 5 seconds before the force is applied. That's a meaning. T is equal to minus minus. 
Okay, so we will draw a diagram here. Okay, so here the object is moving upwards. This is the point you are asked to take x equal to zero and uh, t equal to zero. X equal to zero, t equal to zero. Then, what is the situation of the body five seconds before? That's the first part. It's the first case. T is equal to minus 5. I told you the meaning of minus 5, 5 seconds before. See, 5 seconds before it was moving. Okay. Uh, just assume that it was somewhere here. Then from minus 5 to 0, it took 5 seconds to travel this distance. This distance with a constant velocity 10 meter per second and this is the origin this point is the origin so it was downward you know the values are negative so before reaching at x equal to zero there is no force acting on the object as there is no force then displacement you can calculate very easily s is equal to velocity into time because no acceleration is equal to okay so you will get a minus 50 meter so where was the position of the object before the force is applied the position of the object is 50 meter below the point which we have taken as origin 50 meter this distance is 50 meter so if you take this point as origin this will be negative axis downward it is negative axis as it is negative axis we will write it as we will write it as minus 50 negative axis now come to question two so the object now remained uh, O. The force is applied towards south. Force is applied towards south once the object reaches at the origin. Okay. So second case is it is given time is equal to 25 seconds. Means 0 to 25 seconds. 25. 0 to 25 seconds so but at uh, zero seconds what happens uh, the object is being subjected to an acceleration because force is applied so first you have to find the acceleration okay so a is equal to f by m is equal to substitute the value of f and m you will get a minus 20 meter per second square what is the reason we take a minus 20 because force is applied against the motion and also it is directed along negative axis so it will be minus 20 meter per second square now you can calculate the displacement of the object s is equal to s is equal to u t plus half at square is equal to ut plus half at square u is 10 and uh, a is minus 20 t is 25 and find the value of displacement okay so you will get uh, the displacement around uh, minus 6 kilometer you will get Again, minus 6 because due to this force, the object will move downward along negative axis. Okay, now come to third case. T is equal to 100 seconds. T equal to 100 seconds directly you cannot catch. The reason, for 30 seconds the force is acting. Therefore, acceleration is there up to 30 seconds. After 30 seconds, there is no force. 
so the object moves with the uniform velocity therefore we have to calculate it in two steps first case you can take displacement for 30 seconds displacement for 30 seconds again you can use the same formula s is equal to s is equal to u t plus half a t square only the difference this time time you have to take it 30 seconds okay and uh, you have to substitute the values and try to uh, calculate it okay you will get around 8.7 kilometer 8.7 kilometer then in the next step you have to calculate what's the velocity acquired by the body at the end of 30 seconds how to calculate the velocity you have to use the formula v is equal to u plus 8 use the formula v is equal to u plus 80 you will get a minus 590 minus 590 meter per second means from 30 seconds to 100 seconds the object is moving with the uniform velocity reason i told you no force okay so we have to find out the remaining distance remaining distance means sir, yes, 30 to 70, 30, sorry, 30 to 100 is equal to, again, how can you calculate it is velocity into time because uniform velocity, no acceleration. Velocity, you have to substitute as 590 and time is 70 seconds, 30 to 100 means 70 seconds so uh, you will get the answer around uh, 41.3 kilometer 41.3 kilometer now to total distance what we have to find out from 0 to 100 we have to find out so you what you have to do these two values you have to add to get the answer uh, for the object traveled for 100 seconds you will get the answer around the 50 kilometer okay just try to calculate and to find the answer so of course it is negative okay these all values are negative because due to force the object is traveling along negative axis i told you already okay so that's about the question 10. now next question 11 the track starts from rest and accelerates uniformly at two meter per second square at t equal to 10 seconds a stone is dropped then uh, from the height six meter from the ground what are the velocity and acceleration of the stone at t is equal to 11 seconds okay first think about the acceleration first once a stone is dropped okay once it is detached from the track there is no horizontal acceleration it is just like a projectile so ax is equal to zero then Vertical acceleration is there, Ay, and Ay will be is equal to G. You can take it as 9.8 or 10 meter per second square. 9.8 or 10 meter per second square, you can take. That is vertical acceleration. Okay, so we got accelerations. Now, next we have to see velocities. Okay, we think about the velocity. First, uh, Vx is equal to horizontal velocity. We can calculate Vx is equal to Ux plus Axt. Question says that the truck starts from rest. So, Ux is equal to 0. And here, at the time of uh, rolling of the stone, you can see. Velocity means it is the velocity, uh, sorry, acceleration means the acceleration acquired by the truck, that is 2 meter per second square. Okay.
okay and uh, that horizontal velocity and t you have to substitute there when you substitute the value of t okay so you will get a zero plus uh, acceleration of the truck horizontal acceleration of the truck is two and uh, time is 10. So what is the reason I have taken time 10? Because for 10 seconds, it is, it is there on the, the stone is on the truck. So whatever velocity occurred by the truck in 10 seconds, stone also will have the same horizontal velocity. Afterwards, you know, horizontal velocity remains constant. There is no change in horizontal velocity. Remember what you have studied in project A. So whatever velocity it was at 10 seconds, it retains that same horizontal velocity even at 11 seconds also. Okay. Now, come to the vertical velocity V by. Vertical velocity V by. V by is equal to U y plus A y t. Here also, U y is equal to 0 plus A y. Ay means it is g and time for how much time the stone is traveling vertically downward till 10 seconds it was in the truck it travels only one second vertically only one second so time one second you have to substitute there then if you get the value of vx and vy you can find the value of v V is equal to what is the formula result and V is equal to Vx square plus Vy square. Vx square plus Vy square. So you will get the answer. That is the horizontal velocity you have to find, then vertical velocity, then result and velocity. Now next question. Okay, it's a simple pendulum. That is given the trajectory of the bow power stream is cut when the bow is at a extreme position. Okay. So, I'll try to explain with a of the diagram. Case A the pendulum. Now, case A at its extreme position. Extreme position means uh, the bow goes upward like this. And you know, at this point, at this point, bow is momentarily at, then it returns back. Bow momentarily at rest means it has no velocity now. At that situation, you cut the thread. Remember, at the extreme position, there is no velocity for the bow. So naturally, what happens? No velocity. You drop an object. What happens? It goes vertically downward along a straight line path. So that is the first answer. Okay, goes along a straight line path vertically downward. Now, come to answer B. Again, we have the pendulum. Now, what happens? From the extreme position, the bow is moving like this. And its velocity will be tangential. And that velocity is maximum at the main position. At that situation, you cut the thread. The bow has a horizontal velocity. So any object which is falling with a horizontal velocity is a projectile. So what happens? Because of its horizontal velocity, it follows a parabolic path. That's the second answer. Because of the horizontal velocity at the mean position, the bob follows parabolic path. Oh. Now, Come to question 13. I think I have told you already. Okay. So here, first one uniform speed. Uniform speed means no acceleration. 
So which formula you have to take F is equal to M into M into G plus A as it is going with the uniform acceleration value of A will sorry uniform velocity value of A will be zero. So just you need to calculate mg. Now downward with the uniform acceleration 5 meter per second square. So downward formula m into g minus a where a is equal to 5 meter per second square. Then upward with the uniform acceleration 5 meter per second square formula m into g plus a where a is equal to 5 then what would be the reading on the scale okay that is what we have calculated in each case now what would be the reading if the lift mechanism failed and it hurtled down freely under gravity then a equal to g in this case we have discussed it. f is equal to m into g minus a as a is equal to g force is equal to zero experiences weightlessness and it is freely falling so scale reading will be zero so that's about the question 30. now come to question 40. you can see graph is given okay now four kilogram particle m is equal to 4 kilogram m is equal to 4 kilogram particle then what is the force of the particle when t less than 0 t between 0 and 4 seconds and t greater than 4 three cases how much is the force first of all you have to see this graph this graph is uh, position Time graph. Position time graph horizontal means you have studied position time graph parallel to time axis means uh, object is at rest. Object at rest means there is no force, it is in equilibrium, no force, force is equal to zero. Second case you see from zero to four seconds. Slanting straight line, you can see. Slanting straight line means uniform motion. Uniform motion means acceleration is equal to zero. As acceleration is equal to zero, again you can see force is equal to zero. Again, there is no force. Then here again you can see graph is horizontal. Position time graph parallel to time axis means object is at rest force is equal to zero so in all three intervals force is equal to zero the reason also we have explained now calculate the impulse at t equal to zero and t equal to four calculate the impulse so the first case i am going to take t equal to zero T equal to zero when you take initial velocity u is equal to zero object is at rest and how much is final velocity v you can calculate final velocity v by taking slope of position diagram slope gives final velocity so slope means a uh, y segment divided by x segment that is 3 by 4 meter per second now, impulse formula, you remember I is equal to P2 minus P1. Is equal to M into final velocity minus initial velocity. You have M, V, U, all quantities. Substitute in the formula and find the value of impulse. Next, case 2. Impulse at t equal to 4. At t equal to 4, you have to see what is the situation. When t equal to 4 seconds, u is equal to velocity before that point. 
it is 3 by 4 meter per second 3 by 4 meter per second and after that point velocity v is equal to zero because of the descent rest now use the same formula e is equal to p2 minus p1 is equal to p2 minus p1 and find the value of inverse so you will get the answer now next question fifth question 52 masses are there okay 10 kilogram and 20 kilogram so the situation we will draw like this there is a horizontal platform. In that horizontal platform, you have two masses like this. First one is of 10 kilogram. Second is of 20 kilogram. They are connected with a string then what happens a force of 600 newton is applied to a okay you take it as this one a and here b a force is applied here force 600 newton is applied when force is applied, what happens? There will be tension like this. The first body will apply a tension. Second body will give a tension. Equal and opposite tension there. Okay. So now when you pull the object like this using a force F, then you can see both the objects will move simultaneously. So they will act as a system of two objects. So that you can calculate the acceleration of the system. How much will be the acceleration of the system? Yeah divided by total force divided by total mass m1 plus m2 will give acceleration f divided by m1 plus m2 will give acceleration you will get the answer around 20 meter per second square now what do you have to do we just calculate the net force acting on object a how much is the net force only consider object a when you consider object a you can see 600 newton force is applied that is f minus tension two forces are acting on object a f and a t so they are in the opposite direction so f minus t is equal to net force m1 into a F minus T is equal to M1 into A. M1 you have to take as 10 only. Then you know the value of A, you know the value of M1, F also, so that tension T you can calculate. This is also a free body problem actually. The same way, the opposite case. Okay, what is the opposite case? This 600 Newton force is applied on 20. Uh, kilogram object so use the same formula okay f is e, f minus t this time we will write for 20 kilogram object is equal to net force acting on the 20 kilogram object m2 a so here f is 600 newton m2 is 20 acceleration is 20 we have calculated here and find the value of h for the cases okay now next question 16 i already explained in the class okay formula everything i have given hope you have solved that question now next question 70 a nucleus is at rest in the laboratory frame of reference so that if it disintegrates into two smaller nuclei the products must move in opposite directions oh. There is a nucleus. And what is the condition of the nucleus? For the nucleus, u equal to 0, it is at rest. And the nucleus disintegrates, splits into two fragments. 
fragment of mass EM1 and EM2. And you have to prove that they will move in the opposite direction. So you can take a V2 and V1 are their final velocities. Now, the very first point you have to understand that nuclear disintegration is due to internal force, not external force. Therefore, F external in this case, F external equal to zero. No external force is applied. That is the first point. Second point, initially the nucleus is at rest. So, initial momentum P1 is equal to zero. So, now, final momentum how much? P2 is equal to Two objects are moving, so M1 V1 plus M2 V2, total final moment. Now, as external force is zero, you can apply lower conservation of momentum. Initial momentum is equal to final moment. M1 V1 plus M2 V2 equal to zero. From that formula, you find the value of V2. V2 is equal to minus M1 V1 divided by M2. Now, mass is a scalar quantity, you know. And so, what is the meaning of this negative sign? This negative sign indicates that V1 and V2 are in the opposite directions. Therefore, we can conclude the fragments, the products must move in opposite direction to conserve momentum. Okay. Now, come to question 18. Two billiard balls, each of mass 0 0.5 kilogram, moving in opposite directions with a speed of 6 meter per second, collide and rebound with the same speed. What is the impulse imparted to each ball due to each? Okay, so initial velocity and final velocities are same only. So what you can do, you can take like this, uh, both initial velocities, initial velocity V1 is equal to V and final velocity V2 is equal to minus V. What is the reason we take minus V? Because it bounces in the opposite direction. Now, you have to calculate impulse. In impulse formula, I is equal to P2 minus P2 minus P1, final momentum minus initial momentum. Substitute the values, you will get a minus MB minus MB is equal to minus 2 m mass is given 0 0.05 kilogram velocity is given 6 meter per second okay so substituting the values you will get the answer if you cannot find this negative sign in the final answer given okay you have to understand that they have written only magnitude of inverse that is why right. Maybe in the back of the textbook, the negative sign is missing because they have written only the magnitude of the inverse. Okay, so that is not a problem at all. Now, next question 90. A shell of mass 0 0.02 kilogram is fired by a gun of mass 100 kilogram. The muscle speed of the shell is 80 meter per second. And what is the recoil speed of the gun? So, the same concept in question 17 you have to use. Momentum is conserved. Okay, so F external is zero. The firing in the gun is due to internal forces. So F external is zero. So momentum is conserved. Initially, both gun and bullet are at rest. P1 is equal to zero. Now final momentum P2 is equal to, we can take like this, Mg Vg plus MP VP, gun and bullet, okay. 
now apply conservation of momentum p1 is equal to p2 and find the recoil velocity of the gun vg vg is equal to you will get a minus mp mass of the bullet into muscle speed of the bullet muscle speed means the initial velocity given by the gun to the bullet okay divided by mg mass of the gun will give you the okay now next question 20 a batsman deflects a ball by an angle 45 degree without changing its initial speed it is equal to 54 kilometer per hour 54 kilometer per hour you have to convert into meter per second initial okay kilometer per hour you have to convert into meter per second what is the impulse imparted to the okay. so here I'm going to draw the diagram see there and take uh, a branch horizontal direction then ball is falling at uh, ball is deflected at an angle 45 So this total angle is 45 degrees. Total angle is 45. So this is a flat surface you can take. So this is initial velocity. Okay, so we can take uh, initial velocity m u. Then it is deflected with the same speed. So here also it is m. Now, see here, this angle, how much will be this angle? Half of that, 22.5 degree. 22.5 degree. And here also this angle, the same, 22.5 degree. Now, I'm going to resolve the initial momentum into components. So like this, one horizontal component and sorry, one vertical component and one horizontal component in this one. Vertical component will be downward and horizontal component will be in this way. Actually, it, will, it has to go along this red line, okay, just a we have drawn like this only so now you know angle is taken here so that momentum will be m u cos 22.5 and this one will be m u sin 22.5 then the same pattern you can follow here the final momentum resolve into component one vertical component then one horizontal component vertical component and a horizontal component but this time direction and only you have to see direction will be like this again this angle is 22.5 so this component will be mu cos 22.5 and this will be mu sin 22.5 now you are asked to calculate impulse so impulse i is equal to you know p2 minus p1 final momentum minus initial you see first you take along y axis so when you see y axis you see what is the situation 
MU goes 22.5 downwards. After collision also, MU goes to MU sign 22.5 downwards. So any change? There is no change in magnitude. Both are MU sign 22.5. No change in direction also. Same direction downwards. Therefore, we can say P2 and P1 are equal. See, and the same direction. So along y-axis, no change in momentum. No change in momentum means impulse is equal to zero. Now, next step, take along x-axis. When you see x-axis, you can see magnitude of momentum, no change. But direction changes. So, I is equal to, along x-axis, I is equal to final momentum. Final momentum, I will give a negative sign here because this, this is minus MU cos 22.5 along negative axis. So, MU cos 22.5 minus initial momentum. Initial momentum is again MU cos 22.5. Therefore, I is equal to minus 2MU cos 22.5. Use the cosine table, find the value of cos 22.5, substitute the value of M, U, everything, and get the answer. Okay? So, that is question 20. Now, come to question 21. A stone of mass, mass of the stone is given, point, uh, 0 0.25 kilogram, tied to the end of a string, is rolled in circular path of radius, 1.5 meter, radius r is given, 1.5 meter, with a speed of 40 revolution per minute. So what is the meaning of revolution per minute? Number of revolution per second, we call the name frequency. So revolution per minute to means, maybe it is written speed in the question, then also you have to understand revolution per minute to means it is frequency. So 40 revolution per minute, okay, but that is not a, as a unit, you have to convert 40 by 40 by 60 revolution per second. Revolution per second means the unit is hertz. Then it is in as a unit. So frequency is given. Then uh, what is the tension in the string? Tension means force you have to calculate. So centripetal force formula, you know, what is the centripetal force formula? F is equal to F is equal to M into centripetal acceleration r omega square is equal to i think we have discussed uh, m into r into omega is again 2 pi nu. so 4 pi square nu square last chapter you have studied the relation all these relations okay so you can calculate the value of centripetal force you will get the first answer. Then come to the second part. What is the maximum speed with which the stone can be rolled around if the string can withstand a maximum tension 20 newton? Okay. So you see this centripetal force will give a tension. Now for the second part of the question, second part of the question, tension is given. Tension is 200 is equal to you can directly use the formula mv square by r v square by r is also the equation for centripetal acceleration m cross multiply this equation t you have to take as 200 r is there m is there cross multiply the equation and find the value of v velocity maximum velocity so find the value of tension in the first case find the value of velocity in the second case so we can solve the question 21. Now come to question 22. 
so what happens the object is again moving in the circular path but on the way what happens the string breaks you know all the objects are moving in the direction of its velocity for an object traveling in circular path the direction of its instantaneous velocity is tangential to the circular path so the moment thread breaks it will continue to travel in the direction of its velocity okay in inertia also we have discussed this factor so option b is the answer it flies of tangential okay because its velocity is tangential now next question 23 explain why a horse cannot pull the cart and run in empty space okay horse will try to apply a force and we know that if the horse wants to move it has to get a reaction and space means nothing is there so force cannot get any reaction from space this is the only only answer don't write it is don't write it is due to the absence of friction etc okay so what is the answer there is no reaction force cannot get any reaction from the space we know that when you apply a force on earth then we can move because of reaction getting from earth okay as there is no reaction force cannot pull the cart now part to be passengers are thrown forward from their seats when a speeding bus stops suddenly you know it is due to inertia of motion and explanation also you have to give okay inertia of motion inertia of motion you know that what happens the lower part of our body becomes rest along with the uh bus but the upper part tries to continue due to inertia continue the motion due to inertia so what happens uh we have a tendency to fall forward okay. then next part to see it is easier to pull a lot more than to push it okay so part to see answer you have to write in detail so here two cases i am going to draw here the lawn mower two cases the first case we will see the lawn mower is pushed pushed means you know a force is applied like this applied force so what is the situation here we have to see its weight mg is acting downward weight and lawn mower is on the lawn so naturally what happens the normal reaction is acting upward normal reaction r is acting upward okay now what happens here the applied force i can resolve into components the applied force can be resolved into components horizontal component and vertical component so applied force is resolved into horizontal and a vertical component okay for convenience we can write horizontal component f x and vertical component f t now look at there we want to move the mover in this direction actually that is why we push it so it will move because of horizontal force only because of one component which component horizontal component so what about the vertical component so look at here the vertical component is acting in the same direction of weight so what is the effective weight now effective weight is the weight of the object plus the vertical component so what is the net result the net result we can say the effective weight effective weight increases effective weight 
increases in this case because one component of the applied force one component of the applied force is also acting downward therefore effective weight increases okay now come to the second case instead of pushing we take the case of pulling so applied force f as usual we give you know this uh, weight is acting downward vertically downward weight normal reaction is acting upward normal reaction r then the pulling force you can resolve into components like this components horizontal component fh because of that the more we move over the load and vertical component fb now look at here what about weight and fv fh is used for motion weight and fv you see they are in the opposite direction as fv and weight are in the opposite direction what happens to the effective weight in this case as they are in the opposite direction we can say the effective weight decreases effective weight decreases so when you pull it the effective weight decreases when you push it the effective weight increases therefore it is easy to pull with the diagram clear explanation you have to you have seen in certain books some other explanations i told this is the only explanation you have to draw this diagram and you have to explain then come to part d a cricketer moves his hands backward while holding a catch you know the answer already he is trying to increase the time of change of momentum okay increase the time when time increases for the change in momentum effect of force decreases so he is trying to decrease the force by increasing the time okay you know if he is equal to this is the application of second law of motion or application of impulse if v is equal to dp by dt then time t increases force decreases that is why okay so these are the answers for first 23 questions